Cannondale F600 project. I took some cool photos of the standard bike next to some cool graffiti and waffled on far, far, far too long about my plans for what to do with it. To be honest, I still haven't decided. In this episode, we're going to remove those pesky decals and then strip the bike back to the frame and forks ready for paint restoration. So let's jump straight into removing these pesky stickers. My favourite method is to use a heat gun to warm up the uh, sticker and the surrounding area to sort of lukewarm. You can definitely touch it still but it's warm. Uh, then start peeling. Once the sticker's peeled I tend to reach for the white spirits to sort of remove any sticky residue. White spirits is a you know good solvent here it's not too harsh you can use it on paint without risk of removing paint so that's always been my go-to for uh, removing any sticky residue you spend just as much time trying to get rid of this residue as I, I will peeling and heating the sticker up in this case anyhow if it remains a persistent sticky mess you can always break out the old nail polish remover and or acetone so yeah if, it, if you get a seriously bad one which I will have in a tick uh, you can uh, upgrade your uh, chemical attacks on the bike. Now this Onza sticker on a down tube was a right tenacious little, uh, little pain of a sticker. Obviously it's a really old sticker, it must have been on a bike you know, a good 20-25 years I guess. Um, but it was all kind of hazed and cracked, so it wasn't wouldn't come off in one foul swoop effectively, despite the heat gun. So yeah, I had to break out a little scraper and very carefully try to like tangentially peel the sticker off using the scraper. I nicked the frame a tiny bit, but I, you can't really notice it. I didn't dig into the paint, but yeah, this was a real persistent, real good sticker for back in the day. You would, you know. This was probably hard to remove. Um, what, however, once I managed to heat it up a bit and use a use a blade to sort of dig under the edge, the main portion of it come off pretty easy. Um, but there was loads of little shards of uh, sticker all over the place. So yeah, broke out the white spirits to try to sort of uh, rub off any sticky residues. It wasn't working very well. For, so. Um, after you know starting soft with the white spirits I broke out the nail polish remover which was much more successful. Moving on to the next day now, I notice I can still see some sticky residue from the sack sticker. You can kind of make out the sacks written there. Um, so I broke out the nail polish at this point because uh, it only had white spirits to clean it previously. And yeah, use some of that to remove uh, remove the uh, sacks sticker residue, which uh, to be fair, nail polish is a lot stronger. But use it sparingly because you can lift paint with it. So yeah, start with white spirits. Hey, do you remember seeing this uh, scratch on the top tube? Well, I figured out what causes it. Let me just pop the camera down. Okay, can you see that okay? Yeah, that's about right. Oh, a bit closer maybe. Anyhow, yeah, right, what causes it is, is these bloody bar ends. So the, the bolt for this doesn't clear the frame. So the bar will, but that won't. So this terrible scratch has been caused by the bar ends. One thing I forgot to do last video was to check the chain, uh, check how stretched the chain was. Uh, so I've got this little park tool here and to my surprise, uh, 
wouldn't even go through. So uh, 0.75 wouldn't go through either. Um, so yeah, the chain's in good condition. So I'll keep that for now. Moving on, it's now time to disassemble the bike. Uh, starting with this big spodgy old weird saddle. Um, I was expecting to put this saddle straight in the bin, but um, once I removed it from the seat post, it's in remarkably good condition. There's not a spot of mud or muck underneath it, which kind of aligns my feeling that this bike has been used pretty much solely on the road or very light gravel paths. So yeah, the, the big spodgy saddle is in good condition. Um, I can't see myself using it, uh, but I can probably repurpose this for someone else. So for now, it's going to get kept in the spares instead of getting lobbed in the bin. Moving on to the pedals next. Uh, bike had some of these sort of cheap well go pedals. Um, I was actually expecting a bit of a fight from these for some reasons. I've had these type of pedals way, way, way in the past get completely cold welded to the cranks. So I was expecting a proper fight, but they come off perfectly fine in the end. Um, just like unthreaded it, normal, uh, no issues. The only thing of note is like the threads were absolutely bone dry in, in, in the chain set no grease applied as applied at all uh, the bearings feel okay so they'll be kept and uh, potentially used in a future project and it was a repeat of the same situation on the non-drive side again the pedal was like super dry on its threads no grease applied so undone kept in the storage box for next time next I removed the chain using the old little park chain tool. There's no, no issue for this, it's a seven speed chain. As it was not stretched, I, I might end up keeping and reusing it. I'm not sure, probably not, but for now, I'm gonna break the chain, pop it in a little sandwich bag to keep it safe and stop the grease from getting contaminated on other nice parts, and uh, chuck it in the box for storage for now, and I'll figure out what to do with it at a later date. I like to keep all my uh, parts from a project in one single box so I know bits don't end up wandering off and getting lost. They're all in one box in one place. Next thing I want to do is to remove the chain set. Uh, it's quite easy, it's an old square taper standard. Just pop out the little hex bolt which retains it and we need to use a crank extractor to remove the, uh, the cranks from the bottom bracket. I've not really mucked around with a square taper BB for maybe 15, 20 years. So this is a, a bit of a throwback for me. Uh, one thing I did notice is um, this particular crank extractor, uh, the end is too big to actually get onto the, uh, the actual square taper. But the tip comes off and you have this uh, end here which presses against it. So it's a two type uh, of crank extractor, which is fortunate. So it's a, mistake I thought I'd point out to you because you could just put that crank extractor into the chain set, uh, winch it up tight and start extracting just pull the threads out the crank. Someone somewhere is going to make that mistake and I thought it's just worth pointing out for just the one person that watches this video and uh, it's got this far and uh, goes oh yeah better watch out for that when I do a restoration. So there you go it's something to watch out for. Anyways, I get the old crank extractor installed in the right mode, uh, winch it up tight into the cranks, make sure it's tight there so you get less risk of you want as much thread engagement as you can on the cranks. Then start like winching it in and pulling the crank off that square taper. <sighs> square taper bottom brackets are kind of good and terrible. Uh, back in the day I used to bend and snap and break all sorts of square taper bottom brackets but and this bike is not really going to get used that hard. Um, it won't be an issue if I reuse these cranks, so I'll probably stick to the square taper if I can. The sort of chain ring and crank bolt condition is properly crusty, so I'll look at that in another video coming up soon, so keep your eyes peeled to the channel. Uh, let's move on to the non-drive side. the 
insert remove we can now remove the square tape bottom bracket this not gonna lie this is one of the parts I was most nervous about we've got aluminium frame and bottom brackets for this age are all going to be steel so I was uh, concerned that it might have cold welded itself into the frame but luckily someone used plenty of uh, lube and grease back in the day so come out really easily it was no problem at all it's a proper win now here's a cheeky moment for you bike geeks out there can you see what it is someone at some point in time upgraded the bottom bracket of this bike to a shimano un71 that's an xt level bottom bracket got replaced by the un72 then on to octolink so yeah this was a really good high quality bottom bracket from back in the day and according to some of the data sheets I've seen, didn't come with a biker standard. So yeah, someone back in the day had a thing for XT, I think. I'm pretty happy with this hidden little gem. Uh, it's 25 years old because it got replaced with UN72 in 95, I think. So yeah, definitely bagging this one up. It runs smoothly. I'll keep it for the future for sure. With the bottom bracket successfully removed, I can now remove the wheels from the bike. I kept them in place just in case I had to really, really stamp on the uh, on the tools to uh, get the bottom bracket out or change that off. So now they're both removed, I can uh, no longer worry about bending a seat pin or something along those lines and get the wheels off the bike. off I wanted to assess the condition of the hubs obviously the, the, the original Acera X uh, hubs that come with the bike according to the day sheet Ooh, look at that rusty uh, quick release I'll see if I can clean it up with some um, white wine vinegar or whatever it's called I'll dunk them in there and uh, see if it uh, dissolves the rust off and improves the look may or may not reuse them but let's get them cleaned up anyhow um, yeah, so uh, I wanted to assess the condition of the these hubs, to be honest. I'm not sure whether or not I'm going to reuse these wheels. It all depends on which drivetrain I end up using. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to spin the axles and see if there's any notchiness. On the front, they're almost perfect. It almost spins the whole way around. There's a tiny, tiny notchy section to it. So I don't know if it's got pitted or just slightly... Um, slightly corroded in one point I think it's definitely repairable the front for sure at this point in time you can see when I'm just trying to turn it there I'm just trying to feel for the notchy point I'm just trying to zoom in here to try to illustrate I'm trying to like apply a consistent torque to my fingers and feel for any notches in the bearing what I will do is I'll do a video on uh, stripping the axles out of these Shimano hubs and repacking them because um, it's a really easy process. Moving on to the rear wheel, I wanted to remove this uh, seven speaker set. Uh, let's remove this quick release and assess its condition. And oddly enough, its condition is quite different to the front one. The axle's quite rusty, but the actual quick release blade is less rusty. So who knows what's going on there, really? But yeah, it's as dry as a bone and got lots of surface rust. So again, it can go sit in some rust remover and uh, be saved potentially for a, another future project. Uh, let's um, have an assessment of this axle. The rear is significantly worse than the, f and the front. It's, for, it's got, definitely got some notchiness to it for sure. So again we'll take the cassette off, assess the situation and I'm going to try to rebuild this rear hub I think for sure just for the challenge. Um, see if we can get it running smoothly. Potentially, it's ruined, it's rusted, the ball bearing's rusted and it's got a pitting mark and it'll never probably spin smoothly ever again. But, it's there, you can try to rescue it, I've got all the bits to do it. Let's try to rescue the wheel. Uh, let's pull the cassette off anyhow. 
um, there's some measurements I want to take. Um, I want to work out what's the maximum size cassette I can fit on this because the Hyperglide Rehab has changed several times over the years. And like all the other parts of this project so far, I'm going to put this uh, cassette into a separate bag to stop this oily greasy mess getting everywhere and uh, can clean it up at a later date. It seems in good condition, potentially it's 25 years old. I can't find any serial numbers or anything in indicate which version it is. I'm guessing it's a uh, Olivia or STX or STXRC spec part. Um, nothing too flash. But again, stick it in the bag, stop it contaminating other parts and scratching other parts just as most importantly. I'll put it in the F600 box. On to the controls, brakes and bar ends now next. Um, I don't want any more accidental scrapes across the top tube, so let's lose these bar ends before they cause any more damage. I can't see myself keeping them at this point in time. I wasn't a particularly big fan back in the day of bar ends. They were kind of cool, but they're just too much trouble and they, I don't know, they're just kind of dorky, aren't they? But they're nice quality X Lite ones. We'll see if we can recover them. Next, I want to remove these Olivio spec brakes. I'm not sure whether or not I'm going to keep them. At this point in time, I'm kind of uh, leaning towards the keep side. But like all the other parts, remove them from the bike and um, put all the parts in a separate plastic bag for like the system area. So all the rear brake caliper parts will go in a single bag so that way I can sort of reapply them to the bike if I need to. One thing I did notice is everything on the rear side of these brakes is properly rusty so we try to treat all those nuts and bolts and try to rescue them for a future use even if I don't reuse these. I've seen some other cantilevers I kind of fancy on them. Um, uh, eBay. Uh, but yeah, um, one thing I like about this Candale is it's got this little cami weird mechanism going on here. Um, you know, most bikes of this age would have had some sort of fancy um, peace sign or some other sort of weird hanger going on. But these Candales have this really nice, like, sprung loaded, um, I don't even know what it's called, cami type system going on. So you pull one side and it pulls the other side automatically. But I, I think it's really cool. But so we're we'll try to sort out all the little rusty bits in here and uh, make it super tidy I think. I'm kind of keen on keeping cantilever brakes on us and not going to V-brakes. And we move on to the front brakes. They're much like the rears, exactly the same brakes. I just wanted to separate them into different systems. The only difference is you can see at some point in time someone upgraded these uh, the brake bolts to like these fancy pants x light ones and you can see where the the anodized is completely faded. It's gone from like silver to sort of pinky to red. Uh, so yeah, anodizing does fade with a uh, UV light. It's quite interesting, eh? Um, I think I will potentially lose these X light bolts and get some cheeky little titanium upgrades, I feel. Or get some separate cantilevers. Maybe they come with some of their own specific bolts. Again, I'm saving this uh, Cannondale specific uh, little cami brake noodle-y thing going on here. Uh, I like that feature, so I want to keep it. Moving on to remove the derailleurs from the frame. First step, snip the cable. I'm not going to reuse it. Some people do, but I just rather buy a brand new one and know where it is. It's potentially 25 years old. Again, at some point in time, someone's upgraded this to an XT from what should have been STXRC. Looking at the part, um, I'm trying to find a part number. It's 8 speed, which makes me think it's the 94 to 96 question mark uh, series of XT uh, M739. Just freeze frame it there, which I think off the top of my head is 94 to 96. This is definitely worth keeping, so I'm going to pop it in this little uh, baggie here and uh, give it a good scrubbing at some point in the future. I'll also pop the cable in there as a bit of a reference for trimming cables, in case I want to reuse it. 
Moving on to the front mech, again, at some point in time, someone's gave us a cheeky little upgrade. Uh, removal's very easy, it's a band clamp type, cut the cable and just pop it off. Again, I'm curious to see which version this is, so hunting around to see which type of uh, version it is, looking for some coats. And there we have it, M737, matching the rear derailleur for the time period. Next, moving back up to the controls, it's time to remove these heinous, heinous, heinous Shimano uh, grip shifter things. Uh, these are not period correct for the bike. Actually, I don't know what period these are from. I'm guessing the mid 2000s. Someone got the bike up and running because grip shift were not reliable at all. Um, yeah, I'm gonna need to get them off, and I'm was tempted to use fire, but. Um, someone somewhere might actually need these for something so i will save them and send a message out to the hive mind to see if anybody's super incredibly desperate but anyhow let's get them off and have a look at these nice code of brake levers first thing we need to do is get rid of these old cables we won't be reusing those uh, and uh yeah i might keep the alpha cable as a bit of a reference to uh trim the new cables to um, to be honest, they don't seem in terrible condition, but uh, we'll really get some new cables in, for sure. And uh, one thing uh, I did notice here was uh, putting the cables out of the, uh, the brake levers. I had to do a little eviction. There was a, a little spider must have been camping out <laughs> in one of the crevices of these brake levers. Uh, yeah, made me jump a bit, but uh, there we go, there you go. Get my little parachuting out there. Uh, had to be evicted and uh, yeah we removed the brake levers from these bars as you can see they're in a bit of a mixed condition really like the um, the lever itself is in, in pretty good state but the uh, hardware is super rusty oh god come on get in camera the hardware is super rusty and the sort of the paint finish is broken and got itself all nasty so these Coda branded brake levers are actually Diacom brake levers, but they feel nice and used. It's one of the big surprises of the bike so far. So I'm quite keen on um, retaining these potentially. Um, there might be another cheeky option from way, way, way back in my past that might be still floating around unused, which I would be tempted to use, but I'm still gonna try to restore these and de-rust the bolts and uh, repaint and finish the uh, the painted sections because I think they'd be worth saving I mean what would you do save or put them in the bin to me I think the challenge is trying to save this stuff now like it's gonna get increasingly rare and uh, I like the challenge of it next I want to get this bar and stem removed uh, First off, I want to remove this adjustment cap from the suspension fork. Um, I don't want to lose this because this is sort of the hard to find part, I think. Um, but yeah, it's a simple Allen key and big rubber adjuster effectively. Nothing to worry about too much there. Uh, just, just the handlebars are secured using a single bolt, which is feels like madness in 2022. Uh, but times are different then bars significantly more narrow these are coda branded alloy bars they feel pretty light in hand they've got some engraving on this side so i'm just trying to get this in camera for you to have a good look at um i don't know that brand sam it's a bit worn out either way um sam samson knight that's a suitcase manufacturer definitely not that but 580 millimeters in width and they don't look like they've been cut down so keeping these moving on it's time to remove the world's longest stem i'm sure the stem's like 130 140 millimeters is way longer than anything i've got on my road bikes these days but it's secure <laughs> it's not very secure at all it wasn't super tight on there um surprisingly worryingly um but uh, yeah, it was secured just using a single bolt. Something you don't see at all these days, single bolt type systems. Um, but yeah, we've got some rusty bolts on the stem. Um, they are definitely candidates 
for reuse. I'm going to try to reuse this stem. Um, again, we've got some codes on here. Uh, 194. Do you reckon that's the year it was made, 94? I reckon that probably lines up with all the dates. So that's about it for now. Um, one last thing I had to do was remove this chainstay protector. It looked really nasty, so I wanted to leave it for last, but it actually wasn't too bad to remove, to be honest. A bit of heat, and it mostly come up in a, one single go. Just a little bit of a picking away with a knife at the end. So there we have it. The frame is stripped down to just the frame and suspension fork. Uh, next phase I want to do is I want to um, prep the paint properly. I want to see how much of it I can restore uh, and I'm going to make a detailed video on this because I've looked at a couple of people doing it on YouTube and I think they're doing it wrong to be honest. Um, here's a sneaky peek here. I'm cleaning it with automotive car wash, not washing up liquid. Don't use washing up liquid. Whatever you do is a terrible idea. Um, so until next time, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video and uh, hopefully you would like to see how to prepare paint more correctly, I would like to say, more in an automotive fashion rather than, uh, I don't know, attacking it with the most aggressive things. I'm going to start the opposite way and attack it with the most soft things I can find and work my way up and improve the finish. Again, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.